I haven't called a fight of Darren Till's, and maybe we worked it together, Kenny. It was his UFC debut yes. against Wendell Oliveira, May of 2015. I'm just looking forward to seeing the guy fight live. You know, it's been a long time, almost four years for me. On the other side, you have the underappreciated Tyron Woodley, and it seems like much of the narrative leading into this fight is not the champion, it's the challenger. A lot of people are talking about Darren Till. A lot of people, Ray Longo, David, picking Darren Till in this spot. How do you think Woodley approaches it, and ultimately will he remain the UFC welterweight champ this weekend? This is a tough one. Listen, I think Tyron Woodley certainly has the capabilities of not only winning this fight, but also winning it by knockout. You know, we forget about his power uh, and his ability to knock guys out, and he knows how to fight fight southpaws. We talked about his record. Every single guy is one, two, three, four, five. His last six fights or so have been all against southpaws, essentially. Wonder Boy, he switches back and forth, but uh, we'll, we'll just say that to make my point. But, uh, you know, so Woodley, and he also knows how to stay patient. He also knows how to win a decision as well and he's the kind of guy that has shown the ability to stay disciplined throughout 25 minutes and wait for his spots to attack um and we also saw him deal with adversity in that fight against Damian Maia where he tore his shoulder and had to deal with essentially 20 minutes of fighting with just one arm so um I I think the threat of the takedown needs to be present here I don't know if we're going to see a Tyron Woodley who relies heavily on his wrestling here I don't know if he likes to do that um, you know, in a lot of his fights for fear of maybe getting too tired. Uh, but Tyron, I-, I think, needs to take that a measured approach here to wait for his spot to get in and land that big shot. Now, it's not going to be an easy task against Darren Till, who I believe is going to try to lead the dance and make the octagon as small as possible. I think if he can back Woodley up uh, and keep him on the outside, uh, I think Till can win this fight, both by knockout or by decision. Uh, um, I think we saw the patience and discipline of Darren Till as well against Wonder Boy. We also saw, have seen his ability to knock people out. His most dangerous weapons, what are they? All on the left side. His left kick to the body, his left kick to the head, his left hand to the head, uh, and his left elbow is something that Tyron Woodley really needs to be able to neutralize in this fight. Otherwise, Woodley's going to be in big-time trouble. I don't know if I'm going with my heart or my head, but I am going to pick Tyron Woodley here uh, to win by decision. Tyron Woodley by decision for the flow. And how about Ken Flo? Underslept, and you wouldn't even know it. Absolute <laughs> fire today. Um, all right, Dave, couple quick picks on the way out. So no analysis needed. These are just for the record because Ken Flo needs points. So uh, this fight's on pay-per-view. <laughs> Abdul Razak Al-Hassan, minus 155. Nico Price, after that huge knockout of Randy Brown, his last time out. Slight underdog here, a plus 125, David. You going Razak Al-Hassan or Nico Price? I'm going with Nico Price. Kenny, I thought Nico would be the slight favorite here at minus 155, but the further you dive into the body of work of Abdul Razak Al Hassan and the more film I watch, I can maybe understand why he gets the distinction as the favorite, but I think you're shaking your head because you're on the Nico Price side as well. Yes. I don't know where you found this guy. I don't want David on this podcast <laughs> ever again. All right. No, Listen, I, yeah, no, I, I like Nico as well. All right, Craig White, minus 230. He had a short-notice UFC debut against Neil Magny, so full camp for him here as he takes on Diego Sanchez. 28th UFC appearance for Diego Sanchez, who comes back at plus 185. David, what do you think, Craig White or Diego Sanchez? Tough to pick because of Diego's kind of rocky record lately, but I am going to go Craig White just because of that. All right, David's going with Craig White, Ken Flo. You saw Diego Sanchez recently. Still at it, man. You know, starting to finally show some age in the face a little bit. I was like, man, this is the ageless Diego Sanchez. Still looks pretty good to me, though. 28th UFC fight. You think he gets it done here against Craig White or what? I'm going with the nightmare, Diego Sanchez. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, that that just makes sense for you to pick Diego for more reasons than one. All right, finally, Alex White, minus 145 against Jim Miller, plus 115. And the reason we're picking this fight today, boys, is because Jim Miller – will be making his record 30th UFC appearance wow. on Saturday night. Made his UFC Crazy. debut in October of 2008, so not even 10 years on the roster. 30 fucking UFC fights. That just sounds like a headache. David, you think he gets it done here as slight underdog against Alex White or what? Yeah, I think so. Um, he's on a four-fight losing streak, but it's been against really good competition. I think he's going to get it done. Ken Flo, Alex White has been up and down, alternating wins and losses over his last five. You on that Jim Miller side, too, or are you going Alex White? Jim Miller. I'm going with Jim Miller. Damn you, David! Ha! 
David Flannery, short notice, Anakin Florian podcast hey, debut you today. You can't even say I was copying you either, Ken Flo. <laughs> you did right. a good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we always we always have the guest picker lead, but maybe we'll switch it up next week. But nine picks out of you, David. We appreciate it. Appreciate your listenership, and, and hopefully you crush the flow this weekend, buddy. Thanks for the time. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you guys having me on. I've been a big fan of both of you for a long time. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for listening, you so man. so much. And, I, and if Thanks, that picture's guys. any indication, that's not the guy you want to draw in jujitsu class tonight when they're matching you guys up. So try to steer clear of David Flannery. I See, I avoid matchups like David Flannery on the jujitsu mat, mats all the time. I just don't show up for class. It's very simple. <laughs> that's right. Oh. All right, we are both underslept. we got to get out of here. Thank you to our guest, the great Cody Stamen, Ray Longo, who, of course, will be in the opposite corner with Aljo this weekend. Uh, crew at Fox Sports, Ben Wasork, John Hill, Danny Mayock, Jeff Williams, anyone else who sacrificed part of their holiday, their Sunday and Monday. Uh, we appreciate it very much. I'm headed to Dallas Thursday morning for the call on pay-per-view. Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier, Ken Flo. You working this weekend? You off? What do you got? I am working this weekend. Have a great show, dude. It should be a fun one, and uh, I will see you on the other side, man. Safe travels, brother. Sounds good. And as always, if you want to change your picks, yes, feel I will. Free. I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tech. I'm gonna use the old mobile cell phone there. Yeah. And if you do want to see Ken Flo, he is in Los Angeles all week. May RockyBJJ.com. Look it up. Go to the school. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, the hip hop in the background, the gray mats. I mean, it, honestly, it's the type of Brazilian jiu-jitsu atmosphere that would inspire someone like me. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I, I'm Thank you. That, that was the idea behind it, my man. Thank you so much. And actually, I forgot to say shout out to Meraki Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it's going to be our one year anniversary on Saturday and and thank you wow. to all of my students uh to Jason Hunt my partner and and uh, uh co-head instructor over there doing a great job and uh we're going to have Homla Bahal there uh doing a seminar this Saturday and then after we're going to have a little get together everyone is welcome to kind of stop by and check out the gym we'll have some food and drinks over there if you guys want to check it out um around noon one o'clock, something like that. Everyone's more than welcome to come and, and hang. Absolutely love it. No sugary beverages on those beautiful gray mats. Also, no shoes on the mats. That's okay? right, dude. You know it. I mean, you learned that lesson pretty early on. I still can't tie my white belt, but take your <laughs> shoes off before you go on the mat. May Rocky BJJ. You know, it's like, would you rather have hip hop and Ken Flo delicately telling you what to do or Marcos Pahumpa Damata? <laughs> Scream it in your ear. Oh, I'm just kidding. Funny. I love He's you. the man. We got to get out of here. All right. Enjoy UFC 228 Woodley versus Till. Don't forget the prelims will be on FX, and we will be back to recap all of it with you next Monday. With that, for The Flow, I'm John Anik. We appreciate you all listening sincerely. Until next Monday, don't text and drive. Enjoy the fights. Yo fucking later. The John Anik and Kenny Florian Podcast. A co-main event. Valentina Shevchenko has got to be the biggest favorite in terms of a UFC title challenger. Unless there's something obvious I'm missing, she will walk first as a minus 1,300 favorite against the champion Nico Montano, who comes back at plus 700. If you heard our show last week, you say Longo suggested he was surprised the commission even approved this matchup given all of the combat sports experience of Valentina Shevchenko. I thought that was a stretch, I think a little bit disrespectful even though not meant to be to nico montano um but but as far as this fight is concerned it is a championship fight so we will need the round and the method of victory david who do you think leaves dallas as the ufc women's flyweight champ montano or shevchenko well i don't know i i <laughs> with long like what you were pointing out you know it's probably it, it's a little bit of a stretch but honestly i was looking back through it it's probably not even that bad um, as far as Longo's point of view, um, right. I was looking back, 58 kickboxing fights, two pro boxing fights, 18 MMA fights, and then you look at Nika Montano with, what did she got, six, and I think she had one or two or three fights on the Ultimate Fighter. That is a huge, huge, huge gap, and I see why Vegas is liking Shevchenko so much. I just don't know that Nika Montano is going to have a lot of answers for Valentina Shevchenko on the feet or on the ground, really. Um, I think it's going to be pretty one-sided, unfortunately, for Montano. I am looking at a second-round TKO for Valentina Shevchenko. 
Round two TKO, the pick from David for Valentina Shevchenko. And you set up some of her credentials. So she's 5-2 and two in the UFC, the only loss, of course, by decision to Amanda Nunes. But so many championship situations for Valentina Shevchenko. Main event spots on Fox against Holly Holm and Juliana Pena. 69-3 and three overall as a professional kickboxer. Seven MMA wins by submission. She's a monster, Kenny. She is probably going to close closer to minus 2,000 than the minus 1,300 she's mm. at right now. Shevchenko Montano, who do you like? Yeah, and Shevchenko, I mean, this really is her weight class, isn't it? I mean, 125 pounds really is perfect for Valentina Shevchenko. You know, and, and to Nika Montano's credit, you know, she was an underdog throughout that season, the Ultimate Fighter, and she was so good as an amateur that she basically had to turn pro. She was destroying everyone. They, she couldn't get any fights as an amateur, so she basically had to go pro very early on. So, uh, listen, she's very tough. She trains with a very good team uh, when Tom Vaughn, uh, it's right down the street from Jackson Wink. And, you know, I, I think that she probably doesn't have the skills stand-up-wise to deal with Shevchenko, but on the ground, she might be able to pose some problems. She has a good takedown. She has some good ground and pound. But Shevchenko is just dangerous everywhere. She does have a hell of a lot more experience, but so did Roxanne uh, Modafferi, yeah, you know? Yep. So um, I, I think for Nico, she definitely has her hands full. I think she's going to learn from this. I, I do see Shevchenko winning this, and I do see her winning it by finish. Um, David went with second round. I'll go with third round finish for Shevchenko. All right, Valentina Shevchenko. TKO. To click from Ken Flo by TKO. All right, main event. Man, is this juicy. I mean, man, am I excited. You know, a UFC fight week is one thing. A UFC pay-per-view week is a different animal. Tyron Woodley, slight favorite, modest 130, going for a fourth successive welterweight defense against the gorilla Darren Tool. Tool. Darren Till. Liverpool. <laughs> Outpointed Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That was the main event John, back in there. I know. I mean, that is just terrible, right? I mean, that is really bad. Thankfully... I'm told Darren Till does not listen to the Anakin Florian podcast. <laughs> Let's hope that uh, oh, we got perfect. the Darren Tool out of the way here, and and if he becomes the UFC welterweight champion, my call will not have the word Tool in it. As for this fight, Darren Till 17-0 and one. He's 5-0 and one in the UFC. Ten career knockouts, and he returns here after that main event against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That was back in May. David, what do you think he does with this opportunity? Are we getting a new champion this weekend, or what? That is one hell of a good question. <laughs> I've been super, super conflicted with this one. You know, looking back at, besides knocking out Robbie Lawler and takes the title, Stephen Thompson, or not Stephen Thompson, Tyra Woodley has fought Stephen Thompson twice. One was really exciting. The other one, not so much. And the same with Damian Maya, where it kind of turned into counter wrestling with Damian Maya and just kind of counter striking back and forth with Steven Thompson, not a whole lot of stuff going on. The problem I see is that that could be the exact same thing that goes on with him and Darren Till based off of Darren Till's last fight with Steven Thompson. With that, I'm really interested to see how the weight cut goes again. Cause I mean, yeah, he's made weight in most of his fights, but he's had two fights where he's missed by four pounds or more. He's got a huge cut, not that Tyron Woodley does not himself, but he's a huge guy. And this is one of those that I'm finding really hard to pick until I know, you know, that everybody made weight, that everybody actually makes it to the scale. But I'm kind of leaning towards Darren Till by decision. Um, I say that because I think Till will probably be able to stuff what takedowns Woodley may go for despite Woodley really not going for much for takedowns lately, I think he will likely be able to stuff those, and I think he's going to maybe be able to stay at range and counter-strike with them a little bit and just edge out a decision. So I'm thinking Tyron, or Tyron Lee, Darren Till by decision, but not by much. New champion. All right, that's well put. You certainly did your homework. You know,